thank you, um, Mr. Cahoon, for joining us today um, as part of our interview series. We're very fortunate today to have um, two speakers. So we'll be having a um, discussion with Dr. Abraham, who is a plastic surgeon from Ethiopia, who's been instrumental in helping to um, involve the BSSH committee and the BFS committee in developing an orthoplastic collaboration with the surgeons in Ethiopia. And we also have Mr. Neil Cahoon, who's a consultant plastic and hand surgeon in Edinburgh. He has an interest in microsurgery and hand surgery, and he's previously volunteered in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. And he's been involved in helping to deliver a cadaveric hand trauma course. So um, to start off with, I'm going to be speaking with uh, Mr. Cahoon and just finding out a bit more about how he got involved in this venture. Uh, thanks, Denise. Uh, thanks for the invitation to uh, speak to the BSSH. I, um, as you mentioned, I'm working up in Edinburgh and uh, back about a year into my consultant uh, job, uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Wee Lam, uh, who was at the time working with Be First, um, had a conversation with me about getting involved in volunteering and they were looking for someone to head up some projects. And um, I spoke about my time growing up in Africa when I was a child, including in Ethiopia. And so that is where we, where I sort of volunteered and, and wanted to go back and get involved with um, the plastic collaboration in Addis Ababa. So the, the, the background, I guess, to that is that the World Orthopaedic Concern um, uh, Group, uh, NGO, had been involved for a long time in Addis uh, uh, and have been managing uh, courses, ortho and trauma courses uh, with the orthopedic departments there. So they were looking to develop an orthoplastic approach to um, hand trauma and uh, uh, approach BSSH um, as well as be first. So we thought about a co-funded type um, project and uh, that's where I got involved. So back in 2017, I went out with another um, uh, trainee, uh, Matt Bell. Uh, the two of us went on a scoping visit for a week to Addis. We visited five or six hospitals around the city and met a lot of the, um, uh, the clinical directors of the different units and um, discussed what the appetite would be for an orthoplastic and um, collaboration. And uh, very quickly, the sort of key players that we met there was um, a couple of orthopedic doctors based at Black Lion and at Cure Hospital, uh, Rick Gardner at Cure Hospital and Dr. Baruch Anisha uh, at uh, Black Lion. Um, we then visited uh, Yekit for 12 and Alert Hospital, as well as one of the other Abbott hospitals that have plastic surgery departments. Um, and very quickly, we sort of got the lay of the land with how um, hand trauma was managed and thought that there was definitely, there's certainly the volume there as well as um, over 80 orthopedic residents in the city and about 12, 15 plastics residents. So um, we thought it was definitely a collaboration with the residents from both um, backgrounds that could benefit from uh, our joint uh, planning and workshop. Um, we came back in 2019, uh, myself, and uh, Rupert Eckersley, who's a consultant orthopedic surgeon in London, and uh, Mr. Hank Beal, a consultant plastic surgeon in Oxford, and an orthopedic uh, specialty trainee as well joined us, uh, David Podansky. We set up a three day um, planned workshop, uh, which involved um, mornings of didactic teaching, as well as visits from clinical patients, and we set up small case-based discussion groups to discuss the different pathologies with these patients and then uh, we had a cadaveric component to the course where we did several um, trauma procedures on approaches in the upper limbs of uh, three cadavers. Uh, the course was very well received. The, um, we had uh, geared this for about 30 residents but we had double that number on the first day and then the, the resident numbers increased through the week, um, but it was a very successful course. The feedback that we got from the residents and the faculty was, was very promising. And so we have been looking to repeat that uh, model 
Um, unfortunately, due to the pandemic in 2020 and then some internal political conflicts in Ethiopia in the recent years, we've been unable to return, but um, I'm happy to say that we are planning a return trip in April of 2018. Thank you. So um, it sounds like from what you're saying that there was actually quite um, a large need that was apparent on your first visits. And I just was interested to know how you kept the local surgeons involved in the um, kind of scoping visit in terms of um, them being able to contribute what they felt they needed to have in the building up of their uh, plastics units. Yeah, so uh, the, with regards to the local surgeons, uh, we met um, the orthopedic department, we, we met the, um, the head surgeon at Black Lion, the, the vast majority of them came from it and through. And their feeling was that they can manage a lot of the simple trauma, but any complex upper limb trauma would get um, wrapped up really and transferred to uh, the alert hospital with the plastics department uh, to manage. And so it was trying to gear the hand workshop to from you know, fairly uh, straightforward hand trauma right up to the complex stuff to and also uh, an, ortho, an ortho slant on the um, on the upper limb trauma with um, certainly more with bony injuries versus soft tissue trauma and plastics, which is why it was important to involve both orthopedic and plastic faculty in this course. Um, logistically, we set up the course at Alert Hospital um, just to due to the facilities there, but it's something we may look at in the future to, to move it to another hospital. Um, I think it's been very important to approach this from both an orthopedic and plastics background, as we know there's a huge overlap in, um, in hand surgery. Um, we've also, um, in the last course, we asked some of the local faculty to give lectures and to do clinical um, discussions, um, but we're also been involved in cutabout sections. So doing that again in the trip next year so that the faculty is a mixed faculty from uh, from Ethiopia. And as well as the mixed um, faculty, uh, were there people from different stages giving lectures? So were there trainees or was it mainly consultant-led? It was mainly consultant-led just due to experience and um, being able to sort of talk about your experience in managing different cases. But of course, there were some of the didactic lectures were given by the uh, orthopedic trainer, Jody Kodansky, and he, he wasn't there for a free ride. So we got him uh, doing some, some talks in the morning and he really enjoyed that, the preparation for that, and also um, chatting with the residents and, and doing the cadaveric cases as well with, the, with his fellow residents in, in Addis. So I think, uh, Trainees have certainly got a lot out of um, doing that. Both uh, Matt Bell, when he came on the addition, uh, the initial scoping trip to the, he did some ad hoc teaching. David on some on recent trips. So we're planning to take a trainee again next year, um, and we hope that that will become the model going away. And, um, Is that something that you hope will be? A yearly thing um, to what well, well, we've had COVID and that's been obviously very difficult to keep that continuity. But going forward, if everything stays stable, is that the hope that every year or more frequent than that, um, you'll have a trainee joining you? The plan is for an annual course, an annual workshop with a trainee joining us and also a hand therapist, I'm hoping. Um, I, I, we haven't planned for it more often than that, but the other exciting thing coming out of and this collaboration is the, um, the sc a scoping visit, which will be overlapping our visit to to look at developing a micro surgical course. And so, um, our colleagues in Stoke Mandeville Hospital are, are flying out to um, look at um, setting up a microvascular uh, training course because um, certainly Alert Hospital, with the development of their new trauma center, have um, now the facilities and surgical equipment to begin doing microvascular courses and um, pre-transplant surgery. So it's pretty exciting development in the country and um, again, looking forward to trying to help in any way I can. 
And that's actually very exciting because um, from speaking to trainees um, who are working in LMIC settings, um, especially plastic surgery trainees, they are really keen to um, take microsurgery skills and utilize them in helping to reconstruct, um, rebuild lives and, and their patients. And I think one of the barriers is not only the um, kind of expertise, but also the infrastructure in terms of their hospitals and I guess um, having clinical expertise in terms of managing um, post-op the patients who have free plaps and monitoring and things like that. And it's kind of how to build that up. And um, it's really exciting to hear that this is a um, one step towards building that in terms of scoping and then trying to take that further. Do you expect to have trainees from across um, other countries within um, kind of LMIC um, setting wanting to join and take part in this course? Um, well, that is something when we, we talk about site-to-site -site training, we talk about opening up this workshop in the future. I guess is we're very early days with this, but um, certainly the plastic and orthopedic and surgical residents in uh, Addis uh, Ababa, uh, in addition to their Surgical Society of Ethiopia exams, they often do the Prosexa exams. So Prosexa is the College of Surgeons of East, Central and Southern Africa. Um, so it's just nine countries uh, that have a a collaborative uh, approach to surgical training and to examinations and I think we can use that model and that um, uh, format to try and uh, extend this course out to other countries and also to host a larger course with other countries and attending. So that is the, the, the vision for the future. And you mentioned that you had some really um, eye-opening feedback from the previous uh, attendees. Were there any feedback um, that you received that you were um, hoping to take forward? Was there anything key in terms of the changes you're going to make to this new um, course? So the, the, understandably, the trainees really enjoyed the case-based discussions with live clinical patients there. Um, and I think it's important to have a mix with didactic lectures. Because, uh, although you can sit through a few of them, it, it, it soon becomes quite mundane. So it was important for us to mix that up with these case-based discussions, and then they really enjoyed the cadaveric component. Um, we've also had some requests for live surgery, but this is an, an additional challenge with additional um, licensing. Uh, and so that is something we have looked into, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Would the lectures you're giving be recorded? Because that could also be something that they could go back and look at um, and also share widely as well outside of the Ethiopia. It will depend on the AB facilities. Um, we weren't quite set up to do that the last time, but it's um, something I'm hoping again to look at. And something we'll know more when we're on the ground next, um, next April. But that's certainly something we, we could look into to have the video and the sessions on something that's worked quite well with um, the SSH with regards to the webinar series during the pandemic and so we can try and extend that to our uh, uh, workshop and be fantastic. Okay thank you um, and you um, mentioned in the scoping that you were able to assess what the situation was like in Ethiopia at that time. Since Covid do you know what the current situation is like um, for hand surgery in Ethiopia? Have things improved? Um, or what was happening during COVID um, in so, Ethiopia? So I'm, I'm Dr. Abraham uh, Gegsiabir, who, who you'll be speaking to shortly, will be better placed to, um, to, to tell you about the current situation. But my understanding is that it has not been as greatly affected as we have in the UK here. So the, the trauma numbers are still high and uh, the caseload is still high. Um, as in contrast, really, uh, to the UK, where during the first lockdown we had not been dropping in trauma numbers. So um, I, I will let Dr. Abraham uh, answer that question. And as a trainee, um, what do you think is the best way that um, trainees can get involved um, in projects such as this? Uh, is it important for trainees to be focused more on uh, courses? And like you said, we don't some trainees may not have um, as much uh, experience to share. 
Um, but I do, I do feel that um, being able to go through case based discussions and kind of share um, common challenges um, that trainees in the UK and trainees across the world face, we may be able to find a shared uh, management or even a shared um, treatment plan just through discussion. Um, are there any areas you think trainees are helpful um, when we try to uh, attend and join in with these um, projects? I think the what I was able to observe with my previous trips with Matt and with David was the interaction between trainees um, like Matt and David and and uh, the local residents in uh, both in the Black Lion Hospital and also in Alert Hospital. There, there was lots in the downtime between lectures and sessions. There was lots of discussions about what training is like in different countries, and I think that's an important part of it as well. And it sets up links and networking and. Uh, but in addition to that, the, the trainees themselves get a lot out of it. They've never, often never worked or taught in, in another country and, and they understand how the healthcare system works and what the challenges are for, for that country and for Ethiopia. So I think it's a fantastic opportunity for any trainee. It's something I wish I had access to when I was training. Um, and I would encourage any of the trainees out there that are thinking about getting involved, not necessarily wait to become a consultant um, but on the website um, which you've kindly shared here in the um, in the chat section um, please uh, go on the website and send us an email and um, it will definitely be worth your while there are lots of projects out there and lots of um, options uh, at all different times of the year thank you and what were the biggest lessons that um obviously you're not a trainee but from your perspective as a consultant what were the biggest lessons and the biggest challenges from being involved in something like this quite a lot of organization there's um the the, the first the first trip that we did there was a lot of uh, organizing and, and you know and, and funding issues as well that we had to get over but that um but you know that, that everyone was so helpful and um, Having the support of both the DSSH and DPOS was vital in, in achieving that. So that it's quite a lot of uh, logistic logistics and sort of organising to do behind the scenes. Um, but uh, I I think once we get this going and off the ground, I think each course is going to be easier and easier to run. So I think it's um, tricky at the start with scoping visits and running an inaugural course, but uh, I think we'll improve as we as we carry on through the year. So. Okay, thank you very much. And I think you're also going to share with us some photos um, later as well. Um, I think Dr. Abraham has just joined. Hello, welcome. Good evening. Hello. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Um, I was just speaking with Dr. C Mr. Cahoon, um, just going through um, the experiences that he um, was able to um, take part in in Ethiopia in terms of um, delivering a cadaveric hand course and also the original scoping visit to find out what um, was needed in terms of establishing that orthoplastic um, service uh, in Ethiopia. Um, Dr. Abraham, I've got a, a small introduction um, just to introduce you. So um, you're a plastic surgeon from Ethiopia and um, according to Mr. Cahoon, he's told me that you've been instrumental in helping to deliver um, this teaching course and establish it um, in Ethiopia and build a connection between B first and BSSH. And I'm told that you have an interest in upper limb and hand surgery as well. Um, so thank you for joining us um, today. Um, I was just interested in finding out um, from your personal perspective, um, what was it like having um, both trainees and consultants um, taking part in this hand course? And also with the scoping visit, um, what did you find was um, the benefit of having that input from the team who visited um, back in 2017 and 2019? Thank you very much for, for the opportunity. Yes, uh, Alert is one of the, 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 the one of the oldest uh, hospital in the country especially uh, engaged in uh, plastic and reconstructive surgery. And uh, it's also, this is one of the hospitals which is affiliated to Addis Ababa University College of Health Science and the School of Medicine. And I'm also staff of the, 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 the university. 
So the the, the hospital has uh, uh, now that it has taken the the initiation for uh, developing a st strong uh, plastic reconstructive and hand surgery, and as well, um, that is also one of the the unit for the orthopedic surgery. So we, we are responsible for not only um, that training the uh, residents in plastic and reconstructive, but also residents coming for attachment from orthopedics, general surgery, maxillofacial, ENT, uh, and uh, other other residents. So the the the, the collaboration with the uh, uh, first, in fact. Uh, so it started the first time when uh, Mr. Khan and uh, uh, the other colleague, the Matt, he, 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 they, they came to the hospital just to, to see what happening on that end, uh, we tried to show them. And uh, well, when they, when they came, it, when they came for that workshop, the effect is that on um, that, if you think I'm um, that taking all the the residents and other consultants just to have the same exposures, even in, in terms of costs, in terms of all the the logistic is really difficult. I'm um, that, but bringing I'm um, that experts into the same environment is one is the advantage is that the residents, other consultants that are having the workshop in the same place where they are working, with everything I'm um, that which is uh, familiar with them. So it's not uh, a big issue, and we can you can address um, that a good number of uh, residents from different disciplines at the same times. That's opportunity. Other thing is that um, that's also it was to deliver the the workshop not only in terms of uh, just theoretical ones, but uh, we had this hand on on cadavers uh, regarding flaps and so on, and at the same times we had also live. Discussions with uh, on patients um, that uh, were discussing about different cases, challenging both uh, orthopedic cases um, that more related with orthoplastic. So uh, really, um, that was a successful workshop, and uh, where I'm um, that really I'm um, that hoping the same thing to come again. So well, the effect is that, that it is effective within short period of times with good number of uh, uh, residents and consultants and uh, within a short period of time. So that is that is a effect. That's great. And how many trainees attended the first time? Or how many consultants were there? Uh, uh, the, the consultants we, we were about, if I'm not wrong, uh, not less than five or six, but the residents um, that we had to limit, otherwise we could we could um, that accommodate even forty something. But because of the logistic, even I was pushing Mr. Khan um, that we have to take. But finally, we're obliged um, that to take um, that uh, few number of from each batch, and uh, sort of quotas from different uh, departments. Otherwise, if I, if we are going to allow um, that everybody was interested to at attend the, the workshop. I tell you, if I'm not wrong, I'm that maybe 60 or 70 candidates can, can sign for, for the workshop. I'm sure the interest was really high. And just hearing that um, the current course, this year's course, is preparations already in, in play. How is it being kind of organizing that? Um, when is it taking part? Um, have there been any major changes to the formats? Well, I'm that uh, there are two things um, that we are planning to add up. Not, not in fact changing the, the modalities, but um, that just to improve it. One is previously because it was the, the first time, so uh, because of all the, the arrangements, we couldn't make it um, that doing uh, hand-on on live, live patients um, that are doing the operations. Uh, this time, that's one, one thing that we're going to add. In addition to um, that, doing um, the cadaver dissections, uh, uh, sort of group discussions, and lectures. And the other thing is that now recently we 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 managed to renovate our operation theaters. So the, the plan is um, that to have live surgery to be transmitted through the the, the connection, so that 
few residents can can get in into the theaters. The remaining Amda residents can also have the same facilities and consultants. And at the same time, you can also have uh, indicative type of um, that few number of cases to, to, to be operated. And that sounds actually really exciting. And it's probably a model that might be applicable to trainees in the UK, especially with COVID, there's been a lot of changes to training and being able to have consultants operating and shadowing them and being off, off site, but still learning from that experience is um, very exciting for, for training and future training elsewhere as well. I was going to ask about the microsurgery um, element. How important is microsurgery in your day-to-day -day practice? Is it something that you see uh, being um, a future um, tool or is it something that you are already using in your current day-to-day -day practice? Well, now that, uh, now microsurgery is not a sort of luxury. Now microsurgery is becoming a sort of necessity. Yeah. The reason behind is that one is that the center where I'm working is one of the tertiary referral center where we, we are, where I'm that now a lot of residents are uh, graduating, they are going to the periphery and the difficult cases are going to be referred. And those difficult cases are now those cases which need, who need some that the microsurgery uh, that's one. The second is that um, that definitely doing microsurgeries, it has its own advantage. One for the patient, it's going to be uh, functionally superior. One. The second is um, that uh, the hospital stay and all the cost is going to be decreased, and uh, all the efficiency is going to be also increased. So. I don't think that uh, a microsurgery is not is is a sort of luxury or a so sort of um, that secondary things, but that is now unnecessary. And uh, the appropriate place is going to be uh, the the alert centers. Yeah. Okay. And we had a question before about what are the the five hospitals um, that uh, were part of the scoping visit. What is the current situation like in terms of hand surgery um, delivery in in uh, those five centers? Um, do most of the hand surgery cases, um, are they diverted to one particular hospital or are they shared based on where uh, patients present? What's the current situation like in Ethiopia? Initially, I'm that previously, I'm that uh, alert was uh, taking a, a, a good percentage of um, that hand surgery. Still, I'm that all the difficult cases are still coming trickling to alert. The other thing is that we have a big, we are building a big uh, trauma centers. It's, uh, if I'm not wrong, the, the bed is going to be around 350 beds, uh, 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 hospitals, that is uh, especially for trauma. And uh, because of the current situation in Ethiopia, electrifications, industrializations, all these machineries, we have a good number of hand cases on that, a majority on that. Uh, and those patients with hand injuries, unlike the one on that in other Western countries at, at the moment, usually these are mangled hand uh, patients. So that's this crushed hand. It's not a simple slice, simple cut. And uh, usually this, these patients need a sort of my, micro surgeries. One is that like for example the uh, reimplantations for, for the fingers transfers and so on. and uh, also on that soft tissue coverage and that uh, recently on that uh, even though we are not doing the microsurgery but uh, we are using um, that um, uh, loops for nerve repairs and peripheral vascular repairs but still we are not doing um, that a pure uh, uh, on um, that full scale, uh, um, microsurgical type of services. So hand surgery is still on um, that the, the domain for for alert service. And uh, recently, under um, the last few uh, years, we also expanded out our service. And uh, in addition to the doing hand, sur hand surgeries, we are also doing uh, peripheral nerves, 
including brachial plexus. And uh, nobody touches a brachial plexus in the country. Yeah. That is, it is alert that is started uh, doing um, that brachial plexus. And uh, every patient with brachial plexus is coming to alert. And if at all, uh, those who, 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 who dare to, to operate on brachial plexus are those guys who graduated from these institutions. That is, that's also, still there is high demand for microsurgery, not only in, 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 a, in a line of arms that flap uh, transfer or flap surgeries, but it's also in, in the line of peripheral nerve surgery. Yeah. And I think, like you say, it's a big demand, um, not even in Ethiopia, but across in along um, LMIC settings. I, I can imagine there'll be lots of um, plastic trainees who will be wanting to take part um, in this course. And especially if this is something that's going to um, scale even larger, they'll be wanting to be a part of um, developing this as well. And the, the other thing is that if I am going to add, uh, I am a member of the, the COSEXA, that is uh, the Eastern, Central, and Southern African Association. And uh, I was in an exam in uh, Namibia, and I am one of the members for this uh, plastic reconstructive surgery uh, uh, exam panel committee. And uh, what we, 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 uh, we observed is that, um, that there are few centers even in Central and Eastern Africa where the hand surgeons are doing. So uh, nowadays, I'm that we are accepting a lot of uh, uh, other residents from Uganda, Rwanda, and even Zimbabwe, and other Tanzania. So uh, now we are we are accepting them that for short period of time, like three months. And recently, we opened up even the the, the training for Kosexa uh, candidates. And this year, we have accepted one guy from Tanzania for three years, just for a fellowship. And uh, we are we finally decided to accept at least two or three uh, other other than Ethiopians who can who can attend for the fellowship. So that the the, the advantage is that we are giving them um, that the service, not the service, and um, that the training for other countries, neighboring countries. And the other major part is that because there is no any centers, particularly when the Rwandan uh, university started their plastic surgeries, they are depending on our center for hand surgery training. Yeah. So that is that is uh, the importance of um, that having these collaborations with uh, with other institutions like Bifarist. So that if there is a hub in alert or everything, that can be shared for other countries. It could become a fellowship center for other um, trainees as well. I'm sure it's already, but it could be a bigger um, fellowship training in microsurgery. I was going to also ask about your experience um, visiting the UK. Um, how did you find um, visiting some of the centers in the UK and your um, ex experience visiting IFESH as well, the conference, uh, the international conference for hand surgery? Let me start with uh, with my experience in. Uh in uh, Scotland. I was with uh, Mr. Khan and uh, Mr. Willem. And uh, definitely I'm that, if somebody comes for the first time, it's going to be sort of cultural shock. I'm that seeing all the luxuries, all the gadgets, all the experts, then it's really difficult. I'm that sometimes you, you might get frustrated. I'm that being alone, I'm that facing all the difficult things. But also having somebody that who is really willing to come down to that uh, in, the, in the setup where I'm working and just to lend the hand is another issue. And I was so happy I'm that to see different cases, to to get into contact with different experts, and uh, also I had a chance I'm that to involve in surgeries, to scrub in, and uh, that is really I'm that amazing. The other big issue um, that I really am um, that took a sort of a lesson is that about the coordination between the hand surgery and rehabilitation. That was the big issue um, that uh, we are doing um, that is around us and sort of with Mr. Khan and the other colleagues and had a good strong um, that is rehabilitation center, the physio 
the hand rehabilitations. So the, the, the their planning and so, and uh, that's one, one, one big issue. And I had also the chance to, to visit the Ch West uh, Minister's Chelsea hospitals. Just, uh, and that's also another big, big centers where uh, hand surgery is being done. And uh, that was really fantastic. I mean, that the, the expertise and uh, the other big issue is that everybody's specializing with specific uh, parts. So everybody's ultra uh, specializing that one. So that is one, one issue. Uh, regarding to the uh, International Federation for uh, Surgery of the Heart uh, meeting in London, well, I had the chance even to uh, meet in person those people whose name I know on textbook. And that yeah. is another, another uh, fantastic thinking. And uh, I had also a chance to meet people um, that to see their experience. Uh, to share um, that ideas with people, and that was really fantastic, and that's beyond my imagination. I'm that uh, I, I met different colleagues. Uh, some of the people that was the experience in in, in London. Well, that's great. Um, I was also at IFESH. I agree. When you've got all these different rooms, you're almost spoilt for choice as to where to go. Uh, but it was a really nice. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad you enjoyed it, and I'm also glad that you, you enjoyed the experience um, at Chelsea and Westminster and in, Ed in Edinburgh as well. Um, so thank you very much um, to uh, both yourself and Mr. Cahoon um, for taking the time to tell us a bit more about um, the project that is underway in Ethiopia. Um, it, it definitely sounds like an exciting opportunity to make microsurgery an um, integral part of um, plastic surgery care in Ethiopia and across um, the countries uh, within um, Africa as well. So um, I look forward to hearing more about what you guys are able to achieve. And um, I think this is also, it's great that we've been able to share this here because there'll be lots of trainees who are interested in taking part in the BSSH B First trips to Ethiopia and helping to deliver this course. So finding out a bit more about what you hope to expand into with the course. Um, it just sounds very exciting and it's something that um, I would also like to be involved in. I'm sure other trainers would as well. So thank you for sharing that, um, Dr. Abraham and Mr. Cahoon. Is there anything else that you wanted to share? Um, this is going to the trainees um, both in the UK, but I'm sure it's um, watched wider afield as well. Anyone, well, anyone who's interested, interested in global, in global surgery, surgery and interested in, in plastic surgery and hand surgery? Yes, well, one thing that I just want to add is that I'm um, that... Uh... Whenever I'm that, every time with the collaborations, there are two ways I'm that you should have something to, to put on the table and if in, in the collaborations. For us, I'm that we might not have I'm that the, 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 the financial things that we are going to put on on the tables or we might not have the expertise to put on the uh, terms of the table, but to have a good number of patients. We have uh, conducive working environment at present. So that there are also some that residents or registrars who, who, who don't have the chance um, that to see different type of cases, like the cases that we are operating. But it's also another issue that they can also come to 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 come to, to our centers, see how we are functioning, in what situations are working. That's one one issue. The second issue is that um, that research is also another issue, and uh, we we still I'm I'm mentioning that this with good volume of patients, we can collaborate with different different researchers, and that is also a good ground for collaborating. So th these are the things that we can we can put on the table so that whenever whenever we are receiving experts, when we are receiving any any supports from the other sides, these are the things that we can we can we can also uh, offer that's also another thing that you have to uh, uh, give no i agree i think like you say collaborative uh, approaches to research um as well as patient care are uh, things that we can all um at all levels participate in whether you're a trainee um whether you're a consultant um, you can still help with helping to formulate an idea share data 
um, help to um, improve outcomes as well. So I think that's um, good advice. So thank you. Um, so thank you very much. And uh, thank you for your time. And um, really excited, really, honestly, really excited to hear about what you're doing in Ethiopia. And um, hope that we will be able to participate um, actively with that as well as, as a trainee group. So thank you very much.